Hi, my name's Harry, welcome to Welding Fabrication. Today we're going to be looking at basic setup of an MMA machine or stick welding machine, um, some of the functions on the machine, and just a brief overview of a couple of the electro types. So one of the things that we're looking at is, um, for MMA, we've got a few different rod types we can use. Um, there's 6013s, which are a rutile, so a general purpose electrode. So for most general applications, uh, they're absolutely fine. We've got this particular one here, which is a 7018. That would be more so for what we call a low hydrogen or basic electrode. And that basically would be used for something which requires or maybe a higher carbon still. So you want to have a lower hydrogen deposit within the weld itself. Um, so that would be used for something like that. Um, the machine itself, very basic machine. So we've got two ports on the front. We've got one for our electrode holder, um, which currently is on negative. And we've got our return lead into the other one, which comes around onto our bench up here. We've got, a return, we've got our return clamp on there. On the front of the machine itself, um, simple settings that we can set up on. So we've got from our left hand figure, so we've got what's called a hot start. So we can actually set a hot start function on this machine. So we can set it up so that we have um, higher than the current we'll be welding. That's so for argument's sake, if I'm welding uh, 110, we can set it say at 10 to 15 amps rule of thumb above where you're going to be welding. That's also 120. And we're going to set it for one and a half seconds. So then at what, for the first one and a half seconds, it's going to give us a peak current, which in turn will help to push that slag to the outside of the molten pool. Um, after which point in time, we then look at things like arc force. Um, but the actual current we're actually using today is going to be 110 with an OCV, so open circuit voltage of 79.9 volts in this instance. Um, on here as well, we can change the function depending on what electrode type we're using. If we're using a, a rutile, a basic electrode, maybe a cellulosic, so like a 70, uh, 6011. Um, so we're going to use a general FE rutile electrode, so a general purpose electrode we're going to be using today. Um, and we've got it set about 110 amps, and we're going to be using that for a 3.2. It's going to put a bead on the plate. So one of the things you would look at is different electrode diameters. So we've got a 4 mil, a 3.2 or 3.25, and a 2.5 in terms of electrode size. We're using a 3.2. All the packets that they, the electrodes come in, they'll have a, a particular set of information on there, things like current ranges, whether you're going to run, uh, if it's AC or whether it's DC, electrode positive or negative in terms of which one the electrode holder needs to be connected to. Um, so we're going to run a 3.2 electrode. Uh, other bits of auxiliary equipment that we're going to be using, uh, it's obviously pliers, so we pick our hot material up. We've also got a wire brush for cleaning it down and a chicken hammer just for removing that slag that finishes up on the outside of the world itself. Um, so that slag does multiple things. Um, helps protect it while it's cooling down, helps to uh, maintain a nice consistent bead profile as well as this flux covering on the outside which is obviously what produces that slag so that flux covering helps to create arc stability, initiate the arc itself produces a gaseous shroud, shroud around the outside of where you're welding um, and also helps to direct the molten metal as it comes out in the electrode itself so what we're going to do is weld helmet on I'm just going to do a simple bead on the plate. Angles are slope and tilt, quite important. Another thing from a health and safety point of view, uh, when you're chipping your slag off, make sure that you've either got your mask down or you're wearing a pair of safety specs. If that pings off and gets you in the eye, um, it's obviously going to burn you. Uh, it's, not, it's not very pleasant. Angles are slope and tilt, so we're going straight on a flat piece of material. So our angle of, of tilt, which is side to side, because it's a 180 degree angle, we're going to come in at 90 degrees. And our angle of slope, we're going to drag. We always drag with MMA. So we're going to drag the electrode, and as we drag it down the piece of material, we're going to go from 90, we're just going to drop it back to about 80, and we're going to drag it down the face of the material. Okay? Arc length, our arc length wants to be approximately uh, about 2 to 3 mil. Not at too close, because we're going to choke the arc, and the slag will roll in front of us, we will not with slag inclusions within the weld. Uh, so we want to keep a nice, consistent arc length, and just keep feeding that electrode in as it burns away, to make sure we keep that consistent arc length. Okay. So we're using a twist grip style electrode holder, so electrode goes in like so, and then we're going to twist the head of the torch so that's locked off. We can bend the electrode, you don't want to bend it down too far down this way, you can bend it over like so, but what will, what will generally happen is that by bending it, you will potentially cr crack or break off that flux covering on the outside of the electrode. So bending it, if you're going to bend it, just do it right at the base of the electrode rather than bending it all the way down, especially when you start looking at low hydrogen electrodes or to my cellulosics, the flux covering on them tends to be quite brittle, at which point in time 
and it will crack and fall off very, very easily. Okay, so we're just going to create a nice bead on the plate. Strike the electrode like a match. We keep that nice consistent arc length. Keep your angles, the angle slope back at about 80 degrees. And your angle tilt at 90. What we should find, let that cool down ever so slightly. And again, remember, you shouldn't have to hit it hard, you should just get a tap from the side. It doesn't peel up itself. You should just get a tap at the test of space as well, like so. And then we just give it a little wire brush. Don't forget that the whole time while your electrode's in the holder, it's always live. So until you take the electrode out, then we're okay. And that's the sort of standard weld we're looking for. Thank you.